Hello there, welcome to another episode of World of Tanks of Ungainty Titan. And um, this uh, this episode is mostly about the Conqueror. I have um, spent the last two weeks mostly playing World of Tanks because, well, two weeks ago I woke up with a sore knee and I didn't think it was so bad at the time. You know, it was just a bit sore, uh, but it got worse. And by Wednesday, I was really crippled. I couldn't um, bend the knee. I had to walk with a stick, get up out of the chair with a stick. Um, and I couldn't put any weight on the knee, so I got in contact with a doctor, but I wasn't able to drive, so I got prescribed anti-inflammatories, and by Monday I was able to actually visit the doctor. And Tuesday I got some x-rays. The x-rays haven't showed up anything, but it is sw well, it's swollen fluid in the knee or something like that, and um, the anti-inflammatories are working. It has, however, meant that until this weekend I wasn't actually able to play anything on the PC. Uh, and most of the games that I play that aren't World of Tanks have been PC games. I have sort of started concentrating on PC games there in this, earlier this year when I started um, focusing away from World of Tanks and looking at other games to play. But I was able to sit in front of the Xbox and play the Xbox, no problem. So um, I did quite a bit of my... Um, tier 9 grind that I needed to do and I focused on the um, Conqueror because the Conqueror was closest to completion of all the other tier 9 tanks that I have. Conqueror was the first ever tier 9 tank that I ever acquired and it was one of the most painful grinds I've ever had in my experience. Now I don't know if the grind is actually that bad or was it was mostly the fact that I was actually terrible. Uh, in tanks at the time and well I knew I was terrible in tanks but I didn't um, it didn't help because it is quite a big grind and tier 9 uh, grinding out a tier 9 completely and grinding out a tier 10 can be very long they're very long grinds and it can be quite a painful experience especially at the lower um, tiers because you haven't unlocked all the packages so you have to started with stock and um, the Conqueror stock is a painful tank. So I had a pretty tough time grinding out the Conqueror, however um, I eventually did get the FE-215B and I quite enjoyed the FE-215B. So when the Chieftain came along I um, I think I actually had the experience from the Conqueror. I didn't have to do a lot of uh, grinding to get the um, experience needed for the um, Chieftain at the time, I remember that. But I was at about 100,000 experience for the Super Conqueror, so I had about the most of 100,000 experience to grind out. And I've managed to do it, managed to complete it now, so I have um, unlocked the Super Conqueror. Now I haven't bought the Super Conqueror, I don't actually have the money to do it. Well, certainly not the money to do it and equip it. Nor do I have a crew. I don't have a crew on the Chieftain, nor do I have a crew on the uh, available for the Super Conqueror. Uh, I don't have a crew available for the Chieftain either, so that would probably be the next thing I'd have to do with the British tanks, is train a crew to for both the Conqueror and the Chieftain. Um, pretty much as I have done for the... Um, for this tank as well, because originally when I trained the, um, when I unlocked the, car the Chieftain to actually play a few games in it, I transferred the crew from the FE 215B, in effect I think what I might have done originally was actually taken the crew, the FE 215B, put them back into the Conqueror, because they were the original Conqueror crew, then ground out what I needed for the, um, the Chieftain. And then put them on the Chieftain and played the 20 odd games in the Chieftain I did to get a feel for the Chieftain. So just a little bit about my experience in going back playing tier 9 in an extended, over an extended period and not doing anything else or breaking it up in any other kind of uh, tank play. I'm definitely not as good at tier 9, uh, tier 10 as I am, uh, tier 6 to tier 8 say. Um, I play a lot better and I perform a lot better at those levels than I do with uh, tier 9 and tier 10. And it is it is more difficult. There are definitely the really good players are really good and the problem is that you run into really good players quite often. So you're punished for mistakes quite severely. The guns are more punishing for starters, uh, but also the players are more effective 
at doing it. Now, if you run into dumb players, that can be um, a bit of a godsend sometimes. But it doesn't happen as much as one would like. Because if you do run into a completely dumb team that melts, and I think I've had, I think, more one sided battles in the last month, um, or the last couple of weeks, anyway, since I've played in tier nines, than I've had in quite a while. But the thing is, when you're on the one side of battle, on the winning side, you're chasing against your teammates to do damage and to try and score well. And if you're on the losing side, quite frequently you get rushed by a large number of tanks, and the two or three tanks that are with you just die practically instantly and you're then um, trying to fend off a heavily outnumbered and you just won't last, you won't do it and you won't do that much damage particularly against uh, medium tanks and these others that are faster firing. Now of course since update 4.7 the meta has changed considerably as well. Prior to that the tier 9 battlefield was dominated by um, light tanks, there'd be at least four or five light tanks in every team and a couple of mediums. Whereas now I'm seeing a lot more games that are just literally wall to wall heavy tanks. Although lately I have noticed that some people have reverted um, or responded to this wall to wall heavy tanks at high tiers by starting to play tank destroyers. Which actually makes it more difficult when you're playing heavy tanks because some of the tank destroyers out there are extremely effective, uh, at least when they hit you. Now I have driven the um, the Death Star, the FE 205B183, and it is difficult to be really good at in it because it's not actually um, it doesn't fire that often. 25 to 30 seconds between reloads, but also you have the problem that the turret armor is rather weak, so. And everybody on the map is going to shoot at you if you're spotted, and you're very easily spotted. I have no idea what the experience is like in a Jaegeru, but when a Jaegeru hits you, um, he'll do 800,000 points of damage, and you will sit up and pay attention. So I've been slapped around by artillery quite a bit too. I probably need to go back and actually replay artillery again for a while, just to re-familiarise myself with the way artillery is played. I find that when you're playing artillery fairly regularly, um, at least I found I didn't get slapped around by artillery quite as much as I do when I don't play artillery. Though so, um, I do find artillery to be a lot less interesting. However, one of the things that this game uh, is going to illustrate, I think, is the um, the view range on the Conqueror is actually pretty decent for a heavy tank. It actually extends almost out as far as my detection range, which is unusual. I've played light tanks or medium tanks. Sorry, not light tanks, but medium tanks that don't quite manage, don't quite manage that. And um, I found myself doing reconnaissance for my team here on this map. And one of the problems we have at the moment is there's nobody in the bowl. Um, there are enemy tanks on the other side. But everyone's clustered off to my right and there's nobody actually in the bowl, so I thought I'm going to go to the bowl. The con Conqueror is actually uh, very strong hull down. The hull isn't much to write home about, it's quite easily penetrated. The armour isn't very strong, you're really relying on your hit points. But the turret can bounce a lot of incoming fire if you can manage to keep the turret pointed at the direction of the incoming fire, more or less. So this can actually be a very effective position um, for reconnaissance. Now normally I wouldn't recommend doing it with a heavy tank or with any tank that didn't have a strong turret. But given the number of um, the flak of light tanks on the enemy team, um, I thought I'd get away with it. Now I got slapped twice by artillery there, which was um, unfortunate, but I was also very lucky to survive it. I have managed to rack up quite a, an assisted damage score though, um, over 2k assisted damage, so I've done my hit points and assisted damage. So as a recon heavy tank I've actually earned my keep. We've managed to um, get some vengeance against the artillery there. And the, the enemy team has collapsed just in the last moments, uh, so there's the Conqueror gun carriage. Didn't realise that my gun, the pip was actually pointing at some kind of a wall or a barrier of some sort in front of the Conqueror gun carriage. That round didn't go in. But somebody got him and um, that's really what matters at this point. 
So we have, um, what is it, three, four enemy tanks remaining, and uh, two of them are on the hill. There's a T10 down there, and right at the back of the map, I don't know, I mean, T10 doesn't have the gun to hit anything with any great accuracy at this distance, and uh, I don't think it's a useful thing to be doing with a T10, unless he was AFK, because he, he is in around the spawn area. And so now there are only two enemy tanks remaining, one on the hill and an unknown tank destroyer. So the guy on the hill should be visible at any moment now. He has gotten into view range, so I can see the spotter marker coming up. But he's decided to... Ah oh yes, he's gone in behind. There's a kind of a ridge line there right at the back of the map. And um, it will protect him from fire from this side of the map. So he's only got to deal with the... T-34, but he is a one-shot kill to the T-34 at this point of the game. Last remaining tank destroyer right up at the corner of the map. I really don't understand this liking for going up to these corners of the map. Um, I think he's not... Well, he's barely visible to us here at the railway line, and we should be barely visible to him. So we, keep, But he can be shot at once somebody's spotting him. I really don't understand why people go into these corners of the map where they can only shoot, maybe get two or three shots off right at the very end of the game. Uh, well, it makes no difference. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the game. And if you did, please give it a like uh, and a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to the channel. I will catch you all again soon. Bye for now.